Hey, how's it going? My name is Patrick, my friends call me Patty, and today I'm going to be talking about the Kodak Gold 200. It's one of my favorite cheap film stock. In fact, it's the only cheap film stock that I've been using throughout the summer, the entire summer last year, which is why I'm going to be talking about it today. I've always had a soft spot for, you know, this whole vintage aesthetic. There's something about this warmth, this iconic vintage Kodak warmth that the Gold 200 has. But first off, I'm going to be talking about how much it costs. It will run you about $6 per roll. That is if you are getting the 36 exposure version of it. And then the other version will be 24 exposure, which will run you about $4 per roll US. Here in Canada, it would run me about $9 per roll for a 36 exposure and then $6.50 per roll for a 24 exposure. Americans, you guys are lucky. So when you're shooting between, let's say, 11 or 12, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., which is typically like the, the time where it would be like a harsh sunlight, the skin colors would tend to look a little bit red, which I'm not really a fan of personally. But then again, you know, with the power of Adobe Lightroom, you can just adjust the HSL slider around to just color correct your image. I've heard from other fellow film photographers say that the Gold 200 resembles a lot like the Kodak Portra 160, which I never really shot with personally, so that's, that's another film stock that I'm gonna give a try this summer. So yeah, I don't really have much to talk about shooting Gold 200 in harsh sunlight because I, I don't really shoot it as much. I've only shot it during harsh sunlight like a few times. And yeah, like I said, like the skin tones would come off a little red. However, coming closer towards golden hour, like not during golden hour, but before, it still may come off somewhat harsh, but not too harsh as it was, you know, compared to like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. when the sun is hovering directly above you. It's better off when the sun is like somewhat to the side, so you can tell because the, the shadow will be like casting off a little bit to the side. Now, golden hour is like every photographer's ideal time to shoot at especially for film photographers who shoot kodak that's when kodak shines the best i don't know it's really hard to explain shooting during golden hour because it's more so about your feeling like looking at the photo and what it makes you feel it's more about feelings how many times did i say the word feelings but you get what i mean right it's it's hard to explain how beautiful it is like i don't really have much to talk about but you just know like i'll, I'll, I'll just let my photo speak for itself keeps getting darker and then getting brighter, darker and then brighter. It's, I don't know, it's it's cloudy outside today. It's just, it's right now, clouds are just blocking the sun. But anyway, now for nighttime shooting with flash, here's where it's a little interesting and kind of challenging to shoot at. If you're shooting with a speed light flash and you set it on TTL, which means automatic, the highlights and the whites of the photos tends to be blown out when you're shooting on automatic flash. Probably because your speed light flash or your camera flash is sensing that you are shooting at an ISO 200, therefore it has to compensate for it. I don't know, I could be wrong. Somebody in the comment section, please correct me if I'm wrong. However, if you shoot with the flash manually, just manually controlling it by yourself, then you can definitely control the power of the lighting and you can you know, definitely avoid making the highlights and the whites of your photos look super blown out. I'm not a fan of shooting the Go 200 at night because when I shoot at night, I'd rather just keep my flash at automatic settings. I'll let my, my flash do all the work because I don't want to waste my films playing around with the settings manually. Now I've had other film photographers ask me if I've ever pushed or pulled the Gold 200. No, I have not. I've always shot at box speed, which is ISO 200. I don't know, I've never been that that much experimental with the Gold 200. I just 
like to shoot at box speed because I'm afraid to just like waste my films. Therefore, I just keep everything at box speed. But then again, there's Adobe Lightroom. You can just play around with the colors, the brightness, the highlights, exposure, whatever. Which is why I've never pushed or pulled the Go 200. I always shot it at box speed. But honestly, if I have time or if I'm just casually out just shooting random things, then I'll probably just experiment it with shooting um, the Go 200 pushing or pulling it. Now in comparison, I've also shot the Portra 400 a lot, just as much with the Go 200 last year. And I have to say, like just looking at all the photos together collectively, both, you know, Go 200 and Portra 400 photos just mixed together in a grid. Overall, the, the Go 200 is basically like a more contrasty, more warmer version of the Portra 400. Um, some people say it's like a poor man's Portra, which kind of makes sense. And I feel like that has to be because of my scanner. That's another factor is how your photos would come out. Um, I scan with the Epson V600 scanner and the software that I use is just the, the regular Epson scan too that just comes with the scanner. I don't use Silverfast or any other software. Probably that has to do with the colors and why the colors came out the way it is. But that's just another thing to keep in mind as well. Now, would I recommend this film stock? i say yes, but like I said, only if you're going to be planning on shooting during the day, then I'd recommend going for the Go 200. You know, it's cheap. The colors are not as bad as you think it is, especially during golden hour. That's when it shines the best. And even if you're like someone who is just starting into film photography, the Go 200 is a perfect uh, film stock to start shooting with because like I said, it's cheap. It won't, you know, kill your bank account or anything like that. Would I use this film stock for paid photo shoots? I say yeah, because I've actually done paid photo shoots with this film stock. Um, here's a photo of my client that is shot with the Gold 200. It's not that bad, to be honest. Like, it's, it's never really failed me other than, you know, like I said, shooting at nighttime. But yeah, like, Shooting during the day with a Go 200 is, is not bad. Now, like I said, like I've used this on a paid shoot, um, but that also depends on what type of shoot it is. If it's gonna be like a serious like brand shoot, like a campaign shoot for a brand, for me personally, I would tend to lean towards more of the Portra 400, but, but that's a personal preference, right? I can definitely use a Go 200 on a brand shoot, no problem, but then again, keep in mind like what time of day the shoot is gonna be and knowing like how the colors are gonna look during that time of the day. That's just one thing to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about the Kodak Go 200. I hope you found this video useful. God damn, it's dark again. It's just the clouds passing by, I know it's like a little dark and moody. But anyways, hope you guys like this video. If you like it, leave a like, drop a comment. If you have other experiences to share about the Go 200 or any knowledge or experience or whatever. If you've been shooting a lot of the Go 200 and there's something you'd like to share about, leave a comment about it. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe and see you later, peace.